Hey all, welcome back for the second part of our lecture today. Maybe it's a different day, I'm not sure how you're working. So if you don't already, make sure you have your copy of Artspace SM, that stands for Artspace Selection Methods, open and ready to go. And we won't need the sky for this part of the exercise because we're actually going to go online and I'm going to have you find the sky and put it in yourself. So this is a little bit of an advanced selection method, and it's really your preference if, if this is how you want to go ahead and start selecting and masking. There is no right way of doing it. There are definitely some better ways, but at the end, it's whatever you're most comfortable with, however you are able to work more efficiently and professionally. So for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off typically like we always do. So I'm gonna grab my quick selection and I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of anything on the screen. So I have like this tiny little bit of selection. So you might notice that as soon as you select something, your screen changes and you can either select subject or you can go to select and mask. So for now, what we're going to do is we're gonna go to select and mask and this pops up a whole other properties menu for us. So we're gonna spend some time going over how this works and you can see if this is something that you want to utilize in the future. And I think it helps to do this with the same art space. You can kind of compare the work you did doing it the first way that we learned last week and compare it with this week as well. So first what it's doing is as you go through and select, you can see that it's giving you a preview right on your screen. Now to kind of catch you up with me, my default that I started with was an addition. So this is our brush tool. So the quick selection, it was select to add, and it was the size 13. Check those because I'm not sure if you're going to be starting at 13 or 25, you know, I'm not sure, but that's where my default was set to. And you can see that you can even come and use the different selection tools. Like you can still lasso in here. Um, there's different things that you can use, including the object selection tool. So under object selection, if I come and try to grab this roof line, it does a pretty good job. And this roof line, yep, still pretty good job. So again, you can go back and forth between all of the different ones. Now if I wanted to draw my own line here, I just switch to the poly selection tool. Just like the first example, I'm gonna come back and do the details later. If you're brave enough to do the details on your own, by all means, please do. And then again, with these, if I don't trace all the way around the edge to select all of this stuff, I could even make you know some weird selection and then double click. Oh, that's what I meant to do. So I'm gonna hit escape. If you ever lose something you didn't wanna lose, hit escape and it should bring it back. So it's up to you to kind of keep building this area where you're masking. Um, if you want, you can change the transparency so that you either really fade out. So at 100%, you can't see any of the building. By default, it's set to 50%. So you can kind of see what isn't included or you can make it lighter. Either way. And again, I'm just, I'm a fan of the quick selection tool, guys. I'm just so used to it. And by making my brush bigger, so again, I'm hitting the brackets above the return key, I can get huge clumps. Down here, I've already done the really refined portions above. So I'm going to be brave and use a big brush to grab the rest of it. Can you see that some of my windows were still kind of edged out even over here. I have to be careful as I go up top, but that looks pretty good. I'm gonna change the transparency all the way up to 100. And you can kind of, oh no, you can't. You can see now that I don't have my ladder or the top of my building. So I still need to add that. So holding Alt and zooming forward Again, my cursor is always, your cursor is like a magnifying glass. It takes you exactly where you want to go. I want to go ahead and add this. And again, I'm just experimenting. I'm going to add my quick selection tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around this. Lovely. Draw a rectangle around this. Pretty lovely. 
let me turn off the transparency. Yeah. Okay, do it 100. I kind of lose this right here. So let's come back in with our trusty lasso tool. I always use the poly lasso. So I can just click a straight line. This one's not exactly straight, it's kind of angled, so I'm not holding the shift key like I did in the example. And you can see it automatically adds it without having to use the paint uh, bucket or the brush tool. Same thing here, I'm gonna trace around this railing and it gets all of it, but this time it added the sky. So this time what I want to do to take out the sky, I'm holding the Alt key down and I am just going to get rid of these areas. And the reason why I want to get rid of the sky, even in this small area, is this portion of the sky is pretty white. So if you're pulling in like a very purpley or orange sunset or even like a bright blue sky in the background, this is really going to stand out and it might even look like a solid white object. So remember, Photoshop is easy, but easy does not mean that it isn't tedious. I think I forgot this little patch right here. Okay, I'm going to do um, Command-0 so I can zoom out and see the whole thing. And that looks pretty good. So, you know, this wasn't bad. When we're done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Actually, before we do, um, it's really important to look at our output settings. So the output settings, either what it does, if it's set to selection, it means that when I go back to the file, it'll just be selected. But I want to do the shortcut and actually have it make a layer mask for me from the selection. So make sure your output is select to layer mask. So when you hit OK, you not only have art space, but it has created that mask for you. Okay. And if you hadn't done it, I'm a bad example. <laughs> Hopefully you named this art space. I hadn't, but it changed backgrounds to layer zero. So let's go ahead and change this to art space SM, just so that we know the difference. And again, you can hit the slash key to kind of see the before and after. You can see that with my poly lasso, I wasn't perfect. Whoops, I meant to just zoom in right there. I left a lot of white right here. And so I'd want to take that off. So what I can do again is just select anywhere, go back to my select and mask. And then from here, I want to go ahead and actually on this one, I think this is overkill. I'm going to go ahead and just lasso it, but I'm going to take it away just right there, just that little edge. And remember, on my mask, to make something invisible, I paint it black. I'm set to white, so I just hit X, gradient. I'm going to try to spill that in there. Okay, control D, slash to turn off the preview. That looks pretty good. So what you'll do for this next portion, again, you're not using my sky. You're going to go ahead and do a uh, Google search. Again, that's my preferred way of doing it. But go ahead and type in sky or sunset, whatever you want to do. But when you go into images, two really important things. First, go into your tools and make sure that it's a large. I think you can even get away with a medium. This is a small enough file, but large is preferred. But after you find that large sky, here's the example I showed you before. So what you want to avoid is right clicking on the thumbnail because if you save this, it's that tiny thumbnail. What you want to make sure you're doing is you click on the image and then as soon as you see the preview right here, then you can right click and do save image as. And then just make sure that you're saving a JPEG or a PNG. There are some weird file types out there. Like it'll even try saving like the web page. There's a new um, uh, file type where it looks like an image, but it's called something else. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But remember, we're looking for JPEG. 
So if you find the perfect image, but you can't save it as a JPEG, let me see if I can find an example. These are all JPEGs. I'm really lucky today. Remember, it's not the perfect image, so please watch out for that. So to continue with this exercise, please look at the rubric and the submission requirements. In fact, let me pull that up right now. All right, so here's what I will be looking for as you move on with this exercise. So first, mask out the sky. We've done that portion, and I wrote out here, please be patient with the roof tiles, ladders, and satellites. Select a new sky to place into the scene. That's what we were just looking at through our Google image search. Remember to use high quality images to, use, to avoid pixelation and transform the sky to fit in its new scenery. So that's where we use the control T and we use those grip points to you know, pull it in so it fits the sky. And also use your move tool to move the sky to a, um, a location where it looks really good. We won't see the whole image, um, but just make sure it's proportionate. And then last, I want you to bring two additional objects into this scene. So I will want you to include people. So not one person, but people. So it can be a group of people or maybe just a couple of people who are walking together. It's up to you, but just make sure it's more than one person. And also bring in an object of your choice that should be easily transformed or scaled into the scene. Um, I've seen anything from dogs to a taco cart to a build building sign. Um, it's really up to you what you want to pull in. But really, this object I'll be looking at first, how it's masked, and then the second part, how well is it transformed. Make sure the perspective of the object is right. So one thing that's tricky if you pull in like a car or a motorcycle, it should be the same perspective as all the other cars or moto motorcycles, or pull it in an area where it doesn't look completely off. The last thing you can do is insert yourself into the scene for extra credit. And like I just said, your body needs to be in proportion to the uh, rest of the scene, and it should also be the right perspective into the scene as well. Over the next um, three to four weeks, we're going to keep working on these scenes. So make sure you get this done so you can be prepared in the future. And the rubric, I think, always helps. It shows you how much each portion is worth and exactly what I will be grading. Don't forget to turn in your JPEGs and PSDs for uh, grading. And then this week, I'm also looking at file organization to make sure you get the unique layer names and groups. Um, let me go over groups real quick. We didn't talk about that yet. It won't matter so much this week, but starting next week, it will matter. Um, we're going to be doing more than one transformation or edit to a layer. And so it helps to put everything into a group. So I've already named this a unique name. So that's part one. But you can also add a folder. And these folders are the groups. You can see when I hover it says create new group. And I'm going to rename group one art space oops, building. Okay. And what you can do is click on that layer and drag it up into the group. Do you see how it's highlighted blue? that means it's dropping into that group. So now if I turn off the group, it turns off art space as well. If I turn off art space, it's off. If there's anything else in here that was still on, those would still be on. So for the groups, go ahead and group the people separately, the car separately. Um, basically each layer for now should go into its own group. And you can see that you can expand and collapse it as well. That's what I'll be looking for. In this module, you'll have two other assignments that are really similar to this. You'll have the Vila Savoy, where you isolate the structure, not the sky. And then you'll have another one called the Salk Institute, where it's almost just like this, where you isolate the sky and pull in a new one, as well as some objects. This exercise should help cover those two assignments and they have similar um, grading rubrics as well. If you have any questions, please let me know, but I hope you guys have a great week, and I will watch out for these uh, through the coming week. Thanks, everyone.